Have you ever wondered what you can power in your garden with a solar generator? I recently got my hands on a 700 watt solar generator and a 140 watt solar panel. I've always been fascinated with not relying on the city power and storing my own power just in case of an emergency. And in today's video, I'm going to test this generator to power everything in my garden. So my plan is to charge and run everything and only use this solar generator to see how long it can run my whole backyard. So stick around. I think you'll like what I got for you. This video is brought to you by All Powers, but more on them later. The first thing I had to do was charge this solar panel up. The first day I tried, it was really cloudy out. I was only getting 20 to 45 watts on a 140 watt solar panel. So I decided to plug it into 120 volts and leave it. So in roughly an hour and 15, with it plugged into AC into 120 volts, it is up to 22%. After five to six hours, the generator was fully charged. You get a bunch of spare parts with the generator and solar panel combo. From the solar panel, you can charge a battery. You can go straight from your solar panel to your solar generator. And this one where I couldn't really figure out where it goes, but they give you a bunch of options. I have a pretty large cement pad in my backyard with this tree. I saw this stringing light picture on Pinterest years ago, and I've always wanted to try it since. So I bought two sets of Numa string lights right after Christmas for a 50% discount. I attached both sets together and hooked one end on onto the tree. I strung the lights across and it was the perfect length for what I needed. To turn the AC on, just hold down the AC button for a few seconds. I ran the lights off the generator for about an hour. When running the lights, it drew about five watts, which means I could easily run these lights all night with no problem. Over the past few weeks, I've been using this greenhouse. This year, I wanted to test to see if I could use the greenhouse on the hot spring days and then bring my plants inside with my grow light setup for the colder snowy days. I will say my plants have never looked better. I've been using a big fan for my air movements, but just got too clear on fans. I want to run them off the solar generator in the greenhouse to keep my plant stem strong. When both fans were running on high speed, they only drew 20 watts total. With only using 20 watts, you could easily run your fans for 12 to 16 hours a day while charging your solar generator. With these videos, they do drain a lot of different styles of batteries from the camera batteries, my iPhone, my DJI, or the rechargeable batteries. The big test was to see if I could charge all my video production stuff at the same time. I know there's enough room, but could the solar generator handle it? I was able to charge my 145 watt, 25,000 milliamp hour beefy power bank from zero to 100% and only drain the solar generator 9%. To turn the DC on, just quickly press the DC button. My iPhone took around 10% to fully charge. And with all my camera gear batteries, it was barely noticeable. I was impressed with how quickly everything got charged and the battery life that was left over. One of the best features for this solar generator is that you have many spots to charge things at the same time. You have three USB-A plugins, a USB type C, and then you have DC output. On top of that, you got your two AC plugins, and this gives you plenty of space to work with. After charging all my devices, the solar generator was completely drained. I tried to charge the solar generator with the solar panels again. Not a cloud in the sky, it's facing the right direction. And I'm noticing that we are getting 83 watts on the 140 watt solar panel, so a much better result. With the 85 watts, it was much better than last time, and it took most of the day to charge. The big test that I knew was gonna drain the most wattage was my grow light setup. I have been taking my seed trays outside for every sunny day we have. We are still having cold days, so I use my grow room for those days. I have 12 grow lights at 20 watts per light and two fans. When I turned everything on and ran off the solar generator, it could handle it, but it wasn't really looking good. It was drawing 333 watts out of the 700 watts available. I do have a fairly big grow light setup, so I ended up cutting the lights in half and running six, which cut the wattage in half. But if you ran those six grow lights for the full day, you'd only get around four to five hours with a fully charged solar generator. I thought about running a cord out this window and buying a few more solar panels to charge everything quicker. The one downfall that I did find was with the solar panels, the legs that it comes with does make it lightweight, so you can carry it around but they are extremely
extremely flimsy. When I put one leg up, another one would be off the ground or the solar panel would fall down. Overall, I'm really happy with the All Powers S700 solar generator and their 140 watt solar panel. It came in a box that was so small, I actually thought we were missing parts. The generator itself is very compact and lightweight. After using this for two weeks and testing it with everything I got, highly recommended. And All Powers, thank you for sending it to me. Now that you know the solar generator that will be powering my garden all summer, would you like to find out when you should plant 33 of the world's most popular vegetables, no matter where you live? Watch this video next to find out how. Love you, bye.